The banner grabbing technique can reveal compromising information about the operating system and the services that are running on that system. Mm -hmm. Banner grabbing works by using Telnet or a proprietary program. You establish a connection with a ro remote machine first and then send a bad request. This okay. bad request, or for that matter, really any request, right, mm -hmm. will cause a vulnerable host to respond with a banner message. Now, the banner message is going to contain information that a hacker could use to further compromise a system. Now, in our context, the term banner refers to a message that a service transmits when another program connects to it. That's right. Default banners often consist of information about a service, such as like a version number of the software. The banner for a hypertext transfer protocol, or HTTP, service will typically show the type of server software, version number, uh, when it was last modified, and other similar information. Now, when a program such as Telnet is used to intentionally gather this information, it's usually referred to as banner grabbing. Right, and, and you can use a few other software programs apart from Telnet to perform banner grabbing. Telnet is a type of network protocol. Uh, you can establish a virtual terminal connection with a remote host. Now most operating systems come with the ability to establish Telnet sessions. Mm -hmm. So using Telnet is one of the primary ways uh, that banner grabbing is performed. Banners are grabbed by connecting to a host, mm -hmm. right, and then sending a request to a port that is associated with a particular service such as port 80 for HTTP. Mm -hmm. That's right. Now here's something. Do you think banner grabbing is only used by hackers? No. I'm going to say no. No, it isn't. <laughs> System administrators use it exclusively. You can do HTTP fingerprinting and other activities. An administrator can collate an inventory on all of the different services and systems operating on the host for which he is responsible. Yeah, so let's take a moment, let's reiterate the steps of grabbing a banner, okay? So an administrator will establish a Telnet connection with the host. He will query each port and catalog the results. So this technique is used by system administrators and white hat hackers. White hat hackers use banner grabbing during the planning phase of a penetration test. That's right. M malicious hackers often use banner grabbing when looking for vulnerable hosts. Malicious hackers look for vulnerable services. Now, you know that the default banners often include the type of server software and its version. We already talked about that. Right. So the world knows the exploits existing in that, ho in that software. The hacker can then use those exploits to carry out any type of attack Absolutely, you want. Absolutely, yeah. And banner grabbing is an enumeration technique used to gather information about computer systems on a network and, uh, more importantly, maybe the services that are running in open ports. Right. Administrators can use this to take inventory of the systems and the networks on their network. Mm -hmm. An intruder, however, obviously goes beyond this, right? Yeah. He, his intentions are to know the exploits and the vulnerable ports. So he will find networking hosts uh, that are running versions of applications and operating systems with known exploits. Now, here are a few examples of service ports used for banner grabbing. We have Hypertext Transfer Protocol, or HTTP, yep. which uses port 80. File Transfer Protocol, or FTP, uses port 21. Simple Mail Transfer Protocol, or SMTP, which uses port 25. Tools commonly used to perform banner grabbing, and we've mentioned this already, Telnet and mm -hmm. Netcat. As we said, Telnet is included with most operating systems. That's right. 